I'm not so interested in what happens in, on the screen or on the frame. I'm really interested in what happens around the audience and the conditions for seeing. You know, so I'm really interested in what happens behind there. <laughs> you know? Like where you are, somehow. My name is Celine Condorelli and I work with art and architecture uh, through different strategies for supporting the work of others or forms of public space. I never worked as an architect, ever, and I never had any intention in building buildings. I just went to architecture school because it was the only thing I could imagine that would be interesting to study. But somehow architecture is the thing that's stuck in people's mind because my work is quite architectural. You know, I make work that is integrated in the space of the world. I'm not that interested in the gallery space. I'm much more interested in, you know, how your actions as an artist support the world at large. I moved to London in 1992. I was excited to come to London also as a really, really, really young person who you know, was excited by a big metropolis, like a huge cosmopolitan international city. But I had no idea that I was going to stay here after. So I considered what I call existing conditions to be the first material that I work with, the light conditions, the employment contracts of people who work there, the social reality of who inhabits the space and how, the texture of the floor. All of these are different elements that are, I think, the first material. So maybe making a hole, creating a window, or opening a door, or adding something for the comfort of somebody who works there, will be part of a larger intervention, which I call altering existing conditions. I got an email from Jack James at South London Gallery to, to see whether I would engage with the local community in developing a playground that is in the middle of a housing estate, about five minutes walk from the gallery. Because I've been interested in making exhibitions that have different functions, the idea of an outdoor exhibition as a playground was kind of perfect for me. You know, I thought that's a really interesting format to play with. And I really enjoyed having to, you know, like in a way being forced to talk to the people who will be the future users of this site. So my interest in play and playgrounds comes from three references. One is the playground that Lina Bobardi had planned for the MASPI, the Museo de Arte de Sao Paulo in Brazil, on the public plaza, which was never built. The second reference that was really important to me was a project by Pale Nielsen at Moderna Musette in 1968 in which he turned the entire museum into an adventure playground in which adults were not allowed and of course which was total mayhem but was a really serious experiment in seeing how children could provide an alternative society and build their own context. And then the third thing I've been working with quite a lot which is perhaps the only thing that is still um, visible in the shape of the playground as it's being planned, which is the, the playgrounds of Alder van Eyck in Amsterdam. So post-war Amsterdam had a lot of bomb sites and a lot of available space, therefore. And over the course of, I think, 14 years, he ended up designing more than 500 playgrounds for the city of Amsterdam. Some still exist, but most of them only exist in just fragments, you know, like little pieces that are still left. So anyone above the age of, I would say, 20 would have grown up with some fragments of Alder van Eyck's playground. Uh, the playground in the way that it's being planned isn't just a, a set of playable structures. Even though some are more flexible than others, some are more predictable than others. And I don't think it looks like any other playground in London. I don't think it will look like any other playground in London. Mm -hmm.